So we're here at the Chicago Board of Elections petition drop-off for the aldermanic candidates as well as the incoming mayoral candidates for the city of Chicago. We are going to be covering uh, some of the press conferences that candidates are giving and also uh, see who showed up. Raymond Lopez dropped out of the race. It's been speculated maybe he didn't have enough petition signatures, although one alderman here stated that maybe he was just looking at the spread, which is a reason he decided to drop out. There are 12,500 signatures needed to get on the ballot for the mayor's office, so we'll see who showed up here today. I see Sophia King, I see uh, Tony Preckwinkles here also. It'll be interesting to cover what happens here today, so stay tuned. We're here with Alderman Byron Sicho Lopez, here to file his petitions for aldermen. Uh, apparently you got the amount of petitions for the alderman's uh, seat. How many petitions are aldermen required to have uh, to run on the ballot? We have 463 signatures. How many are you, how many are you bringing? We have 2,000. Awesome. It's good to see you here this morning. Any thoughts on uh, uh, what's happening with some of the candidates dropping out of the mayoral race? Well, I mean, it shows the, the importance of having a, a coalition, right, to be able to have and no support on the ground. I think that that's important to make sure that we have candidates that are rooted in our communities. And I think that, you know, uh, it starts with the petitions. And I think that's, uh, that, um, that is the thing, I think one of the things that we need to be uh, asking people is what is the plan? What is the plan? Uh, especially my Euro candidates, uh, we need to have an option. And I think the coalition has to be a coalition working people to change what is, uh, what is being unfortunately the norm. You know, the rich and powerful running the city and the working people get struggling every day to make ends meet. What's going to be interesting to me this morning is to see how many petition signatures that uh, Congressman uh, Garcia was able to get in such a short amount of time with so many other candidates having jumped in the race much earlier. I know that there's probably going to be a, quite a feud brewing between him and uh, Brandon Johnson, given uh, Brandon Johnson jumping into the race sooner and now Chewy coming out as another progressive candidate. Any, any thoughts on any of that? Well, to me, there's uh, one, uh, one big winner here is Mayor Lightfoot. Mayor Lightfoot uh, wins whether our progressive movement is a split. I think uh, there is a clear choice, a clear progressive choice is Commissioner Brandon Johnson. He's made it clear on his position on police brutality, on investment in our schools, on building coalition. Let's remember, Mayor Washington did not join the machine to fight it. Mayor Washington and many people who are running on his cocktails, uh, who even Mayor Lightfoot, who mentioned Mayor, uh, Mayor Washington when it's convenient. But when it comes to implement his policies, you know, there's really few, few policies that really reflect those values. I think that right now what we have is the status quo that is uh, happy to have Mayor Lightfoot or Co Congressman Garcia. We have a suburban hedge fund manager who was there announcing his candidacy. And this is splitting the progressive base and I think it's intentional. I think it's uh, a way to stop uh, what, what the movement was doing. We have a candidate that is going to communities who is building coalition, who is making what how Washington did. Independent political organization opening the gate uh, to the working people. What we have right now is a candidate of Mayor Lightfoot who has been terrible to the Latino community uh, and other communities has been uh, really governing for Ma uh, Wall Street while Main Street is suffering. We have a congressman who has been avoiding any kind of scrutiny and is already talking about the issue of safety is about boosting the morale of the police. When we have the Proud Boys in the department, we have also a congressman who's been okay with the land grabs of CHA. We have issues that need to be scrutinized. We cannot allow the privatization of public land in a time when we need public housing and affordable housing. So we need to be candidates not for what they said because progressive has become a, a word that uh, with empty meaning. Absolutely. We need to make sure that we bear candidates on what they're going to do and what's the plan to change around. And to me, the only progressive option right now is Congre uh, Commissioner Brandon Johnson. I think the status quo is okay with Mayor Lightfoot or Congressman Garcia. And I think that's not something that our community can afford. It does seem like there's a potential for spoiling. So we'll have to see how it plays out. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Absolutely. Thank you. And let's make sure that we have a candidate for the working people. We need a coalition builder that is really put a, for a, a platform to put working people first before the interests of the, unfortunately, the big financial interests that continue to profit in a time of suffering. Alderman Lopez, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, there was some news that broke earlier today that you had decided not to file petitions for the mayor's race, and I wanted to find out after the time that you've put in, what guided your uh, decision to withdraw and uh, not file your petitions for the mayor's office? Jerry, this campaign has always been about helping Chicago, raising Chicago, lifting Chicago, and saving Chicago from the mayor that we have right now. This was not about an ego trip for me. This was about doing the right thing. And the right thing in this moment is making sure that we narrow down the field to ensure that we can defeat Lori Lightfoot. She has to go. 
and with so many candidates running in the race, the chances of her being re-elected grow. I felt it was incumbent upon me to take stock of where we're at, to be able to help find a way to solidify the opposition and to ensure that we can deny her a second term. And the only way that I can do that is by removing myself from this race. I will remain on, hopefully, as Alderman of the 15th Ward, continuing on to advocate for my ward and for the people and to hold the administration, whether it's this one or the next one, accountable for what they do to the taxpayers. But right now, the goal has to be to defeat Lori Lightfoot, plain and simple. You have 10 people, possibly 12 people filing for mayor. The percentage she needs to make it to a runoff diminishes and gets easier. The odds of her running against someone who's an extreme left or extreme candidate and trying to purport herself to be the rational choice grows. And we've seen that trend in the last week. She's not fooling me and I refuse to allow her to fool the voters of Chicago. I will help remind people who she is and what she's done to this city. Any thoughts on who you may endorse uh, to support? Uh, you know, I'm thankful to the thousands of people who supported me and I will help give them guidance when the time is right. Today this is about filing uh, for Alderman and getting through this through this moment, but you'll be the first to know, as well as the rest of Chicago, who I will be endorsing and encouraging others to support as well later. Uh, any thoughts on, uh, there's been some speculation here, Congressman Garcia's entry into the race so late could potentially be like a spoiler uh, position for any anybody who's running against Lightfoot kind of split up the uh, the coalitions that are forming around certain candidates. A any thoughts on Congressman Garcia jumping in so late? I will tell you this, there are plenty of spoilers in this race long before Chewy Garcia got into it. Some people are into this, are jumping into this race, pushed into this race to be spoilers, others are spoilers by default and don't even realize it. The fact is that you that everyone running for Chicago's mayor should take stock as to why they're doing this. If you're doing it for your ego, if you're doing it for yourself, you shouldn't be in this race. I never did this for myself. I'm trying to save my city, and I need to save it from Lori Lightfoot. I think we all do. Thank you for your service and for sharing a few words with us. Thank you. The mayor of Chicago has been an incredible disappointment to people. She has broken nearly every single promise. It's actually quite offensive because of, you know, organizers like myself, public school teachers, public employees, businesses, um, had hope four years ago. And she snatched that away from them because she broke promises. I don't break promises. I'm a promise keeper. And that's what my focus is gonna be, is keeping the promises that I'm running on and to make sure that families like mine across the city have the type of representation that we've longed for. And I'm looking forward to that. Do you think the mayor's having trouble gathering signatures? Is that what she's waiting until the last day to file this? Uh, I'm not having any problems um, in my campaign this far. Uh, we're turning in well over 40,000 signatures. As I said, just on election day, we had over 300 volunteers that showed up. Look, the progressive movement is alive and well. And that progressive movement has surrounded itself around me. I'm very humbled by it. And I'm looking forward to leading this city. Me filing today expresses the strength of the progressive movement. It expresses the strength of the coalition that I've been building over the course of 20 years in this city. The, the fact that we have um, unemployment in communities throughout the city of Chicago that have reached Great Depression era numbers. That's what our fight has to be about, securing economic stability for families who have longed for it. It's the fight that my father led, you know, raising all 10 of us, my nine brothers and sisters, in one house with one bathroom. That's what our focus has to be, to make sure that the ends are meeting every single day and to give families just a little bit of hope that government is gonna be responsive to those needs. That's what our fight is. Uh, Madam, uh, for just for a few minutes of your time, I want to get your thoughts on how this race will compare to the election we saw in 2019. Obviously, we have a crowded field of candidates. Is this election going to be different uh, from what we saw in 2019? What are the challenges that the people of Chicago, the average voter, are going to have to deal with? 
Well, I, I'm encouraged that there's so much interest in this election and so many candidates that that indicates a healthy democracy. Um, I'm particularly uh, here to support Lamont Robinson, who's my candidate in the fourth ward uh, for Alderman, uh, a job that I held for 19 years. Um, I haven't taken a position in the mayor's race and, and probably won't until after the runoff, but um, I, I am encouraged to see so many people out and interested in serving. Now, the thing is, uh, in 2019, Mayor Rahm Emanuel was MIA for the first three mayoral debates until he eventually dropped out. Lightfoot is dealing with a lot of challenges. Will she be dealing with the same challenges like what we saw in 2019? Will she be able to attend some of these mayoral debates? Because right now the people of Chicago want something different. There are so many candidates stepping up and clearly Chicagoans want something more out of the office of the mayor. Well, I think the fact that there are so many mayoral candidates uh, indicates that there are uh, constituencies within the city of Chicago um, that feel either not represented or looking for different representation. Um, I think when there's a, a huge field like this, it's unlikely that anybody will get 50% of the 50% plus one of the vote on the first uh, first round. And so we're likely looking at an election in April to decide at least the mayor, mayor mayor's race and probably many of our older manic races as well. And in regards for uh, Chicagoans to vote, uh, will there be enough information for at least the people to know? Because sometimes one of the situations that voters deal with, especially here in Chicago, is many of them are not aware that an election is actually taking place, even though we're bombarded with social media. How are we going to get the word out for Chicago voters to actually get their vote out? Well, we count on the media to help us with that, and so I'm grateful. Um, you know, but I think it's the obligation of every citizen to be informed uh, when it comes to an, an election. You know, I always say I'm a history teacher. I always told my students that the first obligation of a citizen is to vote in the election. That's necessary but not sufficient. You also got to get out and work for and contribute to the people you believe in. Otherwise, we won't have a healthy democracy. So it's incumbent upon each of us, every citizen, to vote. And as I said, to, to invest time and money in the, in the candidates they believe in. I am so excited today on the first day of filing to announce my candidacy for mayor of the city of Chicago. And we are ready to go all the way to City Hall, y'all. Yeah. yeah. Over the past few months, our team all across this city, folks, volunteers, folks and businesses, folks everywhere have all stepped up to say that we are going to help propel this candidacy all the way to City Hall. We have gathered almost 30,000 signatures and we are just excited that we have the excitement all across this city. This is a time, a time where we must make sure that we are talking about the new breed of leadership in this city and how we are going to move forward. We need young leaders who are not tainted like the rest of these politicians who have failed us for so long. Most of the people in this race are in elected positions they don't do good at or in, in continuing to try to use their career to gain money off of the public. Today is a new day. Yes. We, we are bringing forth the most revolutionary platform that really speaks to everyday people and neighborhoods all across this city. Whether it is making sure that when we talk about public safety, that we're talking about investing into the root causes of it all throughout neighborhoods, investing in neighborhoods to build them, increase home ownership, increase small business development, uh, invest in young people, have a pipeline to middle class jobs, whether it is opening a city owned bank, whether it is banning the boot, yeah. so that we can stop oppressing and preying on city residents, we have a revolutionary platform. Not just banning the boot and seizures, but eliminating red light cameras. We are now going to be a city that makes sure that everyone, no matter the neighborhood, no matter the income status, that they have the opportunity to grow and thrive. And guess what? Their kids are gonna have right. a better opportunity than we did. That's, right. That's what this is about making sure that young leaders all across this city and this country step up and create the future that we can all believe in. Yes. So, yeah. so we are building a multi-generational, multicultural, 
folks all across this city that want change. Please understand that the non-voters and the young voters are going to decide this election. Over 70% of people who usually don't vote, many, many people who don't even register, they finally have a voice from the neighborhoods that's been fighting on behalf of the people for all of these years. The first 30 days, we had over 13,000 signatures. The first 30 days. And I was looking like, wow, these signatures are coming in fast. We had folks, we had over 40 businesses say that uh, we're going to allow people to be in our businesses to circulate throughout the day, so make sure you send it, folks, or we're going to utilize our, our, um, our, our employees. They made sure that each and every day, our volunteers, we had over 100 volunteers help circulate these petitions. But when you go through these petitions, you're going to see many, many folks who circulated, who grabbed that petition to say, we want the youngest candidate ever, but the most experienced can in this race yes. all the way to City Hall. Yes. I know a lot of media, a lot of folks going to underestimate us, but I want y'all to please understand, don't underestimate the folks who have been dying for a, vo a voice in politics. Don't underestimate those young people who are looking for someone to speak about their future and how they're going to progress it. Don't underestimate the policies and the platform that we're moving forward that speaks to everyday people and neighborhoods who have been failed for so long. Don't underestimate us. Trust and believe this come February 28th, we are going to make a statement and we are going to go into that runoff and win that runoff come April and walk in those doors come May and bring forth a new vision for the city of Chicago. And I hope to see all of you there. Jim, I want to put a question. Brent Lopez dropping out, he said it was a crowded field. Uh, are you worried at all about this crowded field? The crowded field of politicians who have failed at their jobs, lo I love it. All right, we are the only outsider in this race. We are the only person in this race who can speak to everyday people who usually don't vote. And we have traditional voters, our seniors. Yesterday we had over 300 seniors at a senior festival for green. And I'm just so excited that no matter the age, no matter the demographic, they're all coming together to say, we want J. Maul Green for mayor and not the regular politicians who just want to go seat to seat. Can you speak briefly to uh, the benefits of a public bank and how it will help Chicagoans? Oh yeah, 100 percent. Creating a public bank is just like uh, they created in, in Bank of North Dakota that's been widely successful. We have the opportunity that instead of putting $28 billion of our taxpayer dollars into banks who redline us, who invest in private prisons, invest in immigration detention centers, invest in fossil fuel industries, we will have our own engine in the city of Chicago where we can back home loans, where we can back uh, 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 increase affordable housing development, income-based housing development. And all of that money and the profit that comes back from that bank will go right back to city services, whether it's helping our underfunded schools, whether it's paying down our pension debt, uh, this is the amazing opportunity to have our own economic engine to rebuild Chicago and then that, that profit benefits Chicago. It's a win-win situation. One follow-up to that, any thoughts on proposing the, uh, the LaSalle Street tax to help increase revenue to the city? 100%. I've always been a, a supporter of the LaSalle Street tax, um, so there's a lot of pro progressive tax streams uh, that, that we would definitely support in this race. Community benefits agreement is always super, super important, and we're going to make sure we hold developers accountable uh, to make sure that folks can afford to stay anywhere in this city. Thank you guys so much. Alderman Cecil Lopez, we noticed that uh, Mayor Lightfoot was not here today, which was unusual because the press is here, or all the candidates are here to share their vision for the future, and, but she's not here. So. I approached you and Kit approached you a little moment ago to ask why Mayor Lightfoot wasn't here because everybody's got to file their petitions today. So can you shed some light on why the mayor is not here today amongst all the other candidates to maybe, I don't know, answer questions, <laughs> share her vision or file her petitions? Why, why isn't she here? Well, is it usual for an incumbent to not file the first day? Um, I presume that she may not have enough uh, signatures to wait another week. And uh, again, as an incumbent, as a mayor of the city of Chicago, it's unusual for an incumbent, especially the mayor of the city of Chicago, not to be here on the first day of filing. I think I presume she does not have enough signatures yet. Uh, I can only hope you're right. <laughs> Listen, thanks. It's always a pleasure to see you. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is the first time I believe in history that a uh, sitting mayor have not filed on the first day. You know? Hey, Paul, come on over here, Paul. Come on. I'm happy to bring on. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is Paul, y'all. You know? <laughs> oh, they already interviewed me. They already interviewed me. They're waiting for you, though. Uh, he got a I mean, suit on there. today, you know? I know, right. I know. He I could not I afford a suit, you know? His guy here could, you know? He told me I had to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Paul's good buddy. Yeah, likewise. Good We've friend. Good friends friend. for a long time. Yeah. How do you feel about Congressman um, Garcia's late entry into the race? Because, like you know, a lot of people are looking at this as a big potential spoiler for everybody who's put in the world and gotten started earlier. Well, I put it this way. Didn't he just run for congressman? Yeah. Well, I really feel this much. Don't try to fool the people. If you're going to run for congressman, then going to turn around and run for mayor is wrong. He needs to not to receive a paycheck for Congress. All right? He needs to drop that paycheck and give it to the citizen because he ran for Congress. All right? So I feel that is, that is total wrong to do, to take the taxpayer dollars out here. So um, come off payroll, uh, Garcia. Come off payroll. Yeah. Look, it's a little disingenuous to, like, the day after you win the, you get reelected to the congressman, you know, you decide to run for mayor. So, I, you know, so I think that's a betrayal of, the, of, of uh, his voters. But the bottom line is this, uh, everybody has the right to run, and this is going to be an issue that's going to be decided, this is going to be a race that's going to be decided on the issues, and, uh, you know, he's going to have to, it's time to put up or shut up. I mean, uh, I mean, but it, what has he said about public safety? What has he said about uh, the fact that schools are closed for 15 consecutive months with punishing results? Or for that matter, what has he said about the kind of the tax and waste cycle that constitutes our budget? So he, he's going to have to bring himself up to speed very quickly on the issues. But look, we always knew it was going to be a crowded campaign. And it, it, it's a crowded campaign because the city is in need of leadership. City has city's in a real crisis. And I think that's the reason as many individuals are coming out to run as are coming out. And as many prominent individuals.